There we go. All right, we are recording the meeting and it will go to our YouTube channel. So every, anybody that wasn't able to see it will be able to watch the uh, presentation here. All right. So as we started back, started out here, we are all still dealing with the driver shortage. I know we are short 20 or 30 drivers ourselves. So I know a lot of us are all driving these days. Our last meeting was held on September 22nd, and our presenter was Kevin with RH Crown. He presented on coolants and uh, the properties of coolants. We uh, said he, he buys his products from Purist Products. Um, the green antifreeze is usually found in older vehicles and farm machinery, so it's kind of a thing of the past. The old green coolant was good for about 25,000 miles. The new coolants are designed for 300,000 miles. So there's a significant difference. The other thing that he said is if we mix coolants, whatever coolant that we mix it with is going to take the properties of the lesser coolant. So if you have coolant that's rated for 300,000 miles and you mix it with coolant that's only rated for 25,000 miles, the good coolant is going to take on the properties of the older of the, the lesser so we want to make sure we're using the right coolants and rh crown also offers testing so they'll test your coolants make sure everything is is good a while ago um okay as Kevin, oh, there we go. There he is. This is the guy we need. Marty, are you there? Can you hear me, Marty? Yes, I can. All right. All right. Um, we are recording this meeting. So Good. we already started it. Um, all right. But we are not at your part yet. It is coming right up. No problem. Our last, uh, our last meeting, last uh, regular meeting, was a year ago in person. Um, it was actually a, a year and a month ago. And it's funny that our presenter at that meeting was Kevin with R.H. Crown, and he presented on oils, properties of oils, I think, of a lot of you were at this meeting. Um, it was February 26 of 2020. Also at that meeting, Christine from Leonard was elected, voted in as our secretary. And she's been doing a really good job. I was kind of hoping that she'd be here today. Um, our first virtual meeting, well, then, then COVID hit, right, about October 7th. So our first, our first virtual meeting was October 7th, 2020. And we had Dwayne Tratt from Deposit Control Systems. He presented on fuel additives and tank maintenance. So so it's, it's kind of ironic that this meeting, we're gonna let um, Marty Lamon from Oh, I get the, uh, with kinetic fuel technology, he's going to be presenting on the K100 line of products and the benefits that we can get from using it. So with that being said, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Marty and, and show us his presentation. Go ahead, Marty. Hey, guys. Glad that everybody made it through the uh, Northeaster. I see Albany had some rain down there. We had a lot of rain up here. Yes, we did. <laughs> it was actually uh, yesterday I had to make a couple of trips up onto Tug Hill. I don't know if anybody's ever been up this way, but it's God's country up there. And I'll tell you, the rainy day is the worst day you could be up there other than being when it snows and you can't see anything because there's nobody around up there. There's a couple, I have a couple customers up there that 
wanted to order some stuff and haven't seen me in a while because of COVID. So I went up to see them. Um, I think I, I've probably talked to a lot of you people down in uh, the Albany School District about K100. Um, we have a few, quite a few schools that actually use it. And it's, as you guys know, it's a little different product than what everybody else uses. Uh, we're organic. Everybody else is uh, more or less a kerosene-based product, which does not mix with water. This was our biggest thing was that we mix with water. And what it does is that it breaks that water down to less than a micron, turns it into a combustible, and flashes through the engine, which cleans the engine. You don't get the, you don't get any of the rust or corrosion in the system because there's no water present. You, you won't get the microbes because the microbes need water to live. So when K100's in these systems, they, they it just suffocates them out. I mean, if they're in there, you're going to get them through your filter anyway, just like anything. Even using BioBore or something, that's a poison which will, will kill it immediately. Where k 100s a little slower, it's, it'll just suffocate it out. But we're going to boost your cetane two to four points. we got a great uh, lubricant, great cleaner in it. And a good stabilizer, which, you know, most of you guys don't really need a stabilizer. You go through fuel so, so quickly. Um, but that's the one formula. That's the only way we make it now. We don't make uh, two different formulas anymore like we used to for diesel or gas. We make just the one now with a, with a heavier stabilization in it. Because we do a lot of stuff with Marine. We do a lot of stuff with the hospitals. We do a lot of stuff with uh, first responders. We we been doing a lot of stuff with the hot shots out in California with the forest fires for their saws because they were having such problems because they, the fuel they use isn't a very high quality fuel that the government buys out there. So they started using us about a year ago and then just in, increased their, you know, their usage of the, of this. Of course, you, everybody sees on TV, the fires are out there raging every day anyway. So they're getting all kinds of use out of them, but they lost hardly any saws at all since they started using it. So those are just a couple of things. I mean, we do some big transportation companies also, just like you guys, you know, that go through a lot of fuel. But I did uh, make a, a quick video um, up here in my storage shed about a week or so ago. Our Because our office is out in Youngstown. I really, Youngstown, New York, I usually don't go out there all that often because it's about three and a half hour drive for me. So I go out there maybe once every other month or if we have a problem or something, so... But I can switch over. We'll try to do this video, Dan, and see how it come out. And then okay. we can go. And, and I brought a couple other demos I'm going to show you guys. So let me just switch on here. Where do I go to share? Um, present now. Present now. Where is that? Uh, yeah. Present now. Okay. Hey guys, Marty here with K100 Fuel Treatment. I know I know a lot of you guys, and I've been in your shops. Right, we can't, we, we can't see that. Okay, we can't see it. Using Hold on. No. Um. Oh, where to go to? Is that now in an entire screen? How's that? Pete, how you doing? Um, this meeting is being recorded, Pete. And we're going to put it on our YouTube channel. Um, I still don't see it. Does anybody else see it? Okay. Um, I, yeah, you can have get it, I, I have your presentation if okay, okay, if need be. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and do it? Because I'm not sure which is going on up here. Well, let me hold this. Let me see. Share. Share entire screen. I don't know. This doesn't. Hey, you want me to do it? Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you do it? Yep. Then I'll answer the questions after. 
Okay. Hang on, I'm gonna pause it. All right. All right, you ready? Yep. Can everybody see that? Everybody can see that? Okay. Can you see it? I see it. Dan. Okay. All right, I'm going to play it. No sound, Dan. No sound. No sound. Yep, no sound. Hmm. I don't know, but you, but you can hear me, right? Yep, can hear you fine. Right. Okay. Um. I I can go through the whole thing without the video if you guys like that. That's that's fine. Well, let, let me try this again. Okay, can you hear that? Nope. Okay. We've got no sound. Hmm. That's the beauty of these virtual meetings. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. But anyway, I, I, I can do the whole, what I was going to show you guys anyway, is that I was going to give you a little background actually about K100. K100 was developed back in 1965 out in Tonawanda, New York by Alice Otto, who was a master chemist in the boiler system industry. And as you guys know, with boilers, you're always trying to get oil out of water. So what Alice did was she actually reversed the formula and was able to get oil or water out of the oil. So she, she developed this formula and it was used on a lot of the uh, Lakers out there and the tankers that were using number six uh, fuel oil, which is a real dirty, heavy fuel oil. They were losing a lot of their capacity in their tanks. So what they did by putting this in, it went in and it took care of the water and it dissolved all that sludge in the bottom of the tanks so that they would get their capacities back. So she did that business for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. She never was a real great businesswoman. She was very smart with chemicals and like that, but never, never really good with business. So back in, oh, I'm going to say 2000, I met up with a guy that was doing that and I was just getting done working at um, a paper mill up here in DeFeria. Hooked up with him and I started looking at the product. I took it to some of my mechanical friends who knew more about it than I did. And they all they all loved the product and wanted to start buying it. So I, I hooked up with one of my partners that was just I, I I met I met him in Watertown at Lamaz class. We actually both played in the uh, Pittsburgh Pirate um, organization, minor league organization. So he was just getting done with his power. Uh, he was in the power dam or dam energy business. They just sold off their dams. So I started with him and we got some capital together and we started this company, b &L Distributors, which was back, we ran it for, I'm gonna say 10 years. And I that's when I started going down to Albany, working with everybody down there. I think my first, one of my first customers, I think, Dan, were you guys in, uh, um, Who's the other one? Uh, Saratoga Springs it was some of my first customers, and Stillwater, Gilderland, and so after we after we started building this up, then we started going over on the coast, working with a lot of the marinas and like that. And so we started building up a little bit. Then after like ten years, um, Alice was very sick, so we ended up buying the company off her, and we brought on another one of my partners, Mark Quallen. So there's a three of us that actually own the company. And so from there, 
we started, I started doing business with uh, Napa and we did a lot of, I did like over 150 of their stores. We went to Atlanta there to bring it into the whole system. And when I got there, they wanted us to give it to them basically. And we couldn't do it. So we stopped. I, I didn't end up doing it with uh, corporate Napa. But after another five years, they asked us to come back down and we brought in another guy that dealt with Napa and and now he's got it through the whole system across the country. So we're in almost all the Napa stores. And I do some stuff with Advance Auto. Um, then I do stuff with uh, most of your major um, lubricant distributors, uh, Brentag and uh, Denison, uh, Superior has it, um, Deckman has it. Um, Prime Lubes has it out of uh, New Jersey, but I don't think they come up this far. Um, but anyway, there's there's quite a few. You can ask most of your um, fuel dis or lube distributors that if they have the product, and they do. And I always kept some of my guys in Albany and sold them direct anyway because they were where I started. So, you know, if you guys can't get it through them, you can always call me and I will get it to you direct anyway. But anyway, so that's when we started with there. And then and then it kind of just branched out to a lot of these different uh, organizations, DOTs and a lot of municipalities, because the problem they had, which was funny, was with when they went to the ultra low sulfur diesel, they said, you know, this is it. We don't we're not going to need anything. We're going to it's going to be really good in the cold weather. But what they didn't know was that ultra low diesel is hydro flushed at the refineries to get the sulfur out and sulfur was the one part of the diesel that reacted with the kerosene and it was your lubricant. So now when you're mixing Carol with the new ultra low sulfur diesel, when you put 10% in, it used to drop it down, you know, like 10 points. Now it drops it down about two. So guys that were, that were using the, you know, the 80, 20 mixes, it wasn't, they weren't getting the, Four points that they were getting before with it with the sulfur in it so also with the new uh ultra low was that it was more suspended water it used to be like 30 parts per million suspended water in the old diesel fuel now it's between 100 and 300. so what happens a lot of times is that when i when i talk to these companies you'll go in and look at their filters it's really not a gelling problem it's a crystallization problem so what happens when it gets really cold is that water freezes and it plugs these filters up. So with K100 in there, it, it doesn't have a freezing point. Uh, it does. It's minus 70, but it, it's pretty safe around here. So so it doesn't you don't get the crystallization. It'll keep it'll keep everything dry. It'll help help with this um, kerosene react the way it should be. It's going to it has a cold flow suppressant in it. It's got a great lubricant in it. And like I said, a good cleaner and a good stabilizer. So what we found out was um, there you are. <laughs> you come back. Okay. Well, so, so I, I made up a couple of things here. This is, this is some, I don't know, you guys see this okay? This is just some uh, ethanol gas. And in the bottom coloring is the water. So I colored it so everybody could see. This is what happens in a lot of your, um, in your gas engines, especially like with the snowmobiles or small engines and like that. Everybody thought when they went back to the, the uh, non-ethanol fuel, everything was going to be great. But uh, my guys up here, the snowmobile, they found out that when in, in the wintertime, even when you're running the, the non-ethanol, you get condensation, everything, and that stuff still freezes in the lines. And actually, if I had my choice to run anything in cold weather, it would be ethanol because it, it doesn't freeze. It, it may run crappy, but at least it's running. You know, I can get back somewhere where I can at least, you know, not uh, get frozen. So what I did here... Like I say, I, I got a couple of these. What, what I was just going to show you kind of quickly here was that everybody uses, and this goes the same thing with the diesel. Um, I didn't do the diesel today because it was too hard to get out of the pump today. So, 
plus I already had my regular clothes on. But what, what I'll show you here is, see, when you take any of these additives, hope I don't spill this on my computer, and you put them in, here's what happens. They're all, like I say, they're all petroleum-based additives. So even when you shake that up, do you see that? There's your water that stays right in there. I mean, it's it, it's always going to be in there. So what I do with our stuff, so if I take this one, this has got your water in there, and I put our stuff in there. No, that's on my computer. Here's the difference. I mean, you don't even have to shake it up. Can you guys see that? There's nothing, there's no water in there at all. It's all back into a uh, fuel solution. See, that's the problem. The difference between us and everybody else is that we put ours back in solution where a lot of them are either, you know, pushing it to the, like most of your stuff pushes water to the bottom of the tank. Um, whether you're using uh, anyone, anyone you guys are using are, are probably do the same thing. They push to the bottom of the tank. That's where you get your rust, your corrosion, your freeze ups. But with K100 going in and attacking the water and changing that into a, a you know, drying the fuel out and not having a freezing point, everything's going to run better. It's going to run cleaner. Uh, we do the Cargill mines. It knocks down the knocks. Uh, like up to 40% underground to keep it under the OSHA limits. So, I mean, that was the whole thing when Dave Christopher was at Shenandoah, they had such a, a blue cloud out in the parking lot. That's basically why we started there is that we went out there and treated it and it cleared it up. And, you know, they've been using it ever since. But um, you, is there any questions, Any anything uh, you guys want to ask me before we go on to anything else? Hold on. There we go. Yeah. What, yeah. What was the first additive that you put in? The when well, you. Just... We're not supposed to say it. I don't want to get in trouble. All right, but it's yeah. You don't have to. But it's it was just a different kind of uh product. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We we've been sued by about two or three companies because uh, what they said was what i'm doing doesn't sh doesn't show what happens in a tank mm -hmm. and i'm saying that's not what we're showing we're showing what ha what your product does with moisture which is absolutely what happens in a tank right but, and now you and, and did we, that we, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead well we we actually had a lawsuit against us also from uh another company saying that they brought in the epa saying that you know we were a pesticide and that we have to be classified as a poison and a pesticide, which we absolutely aren't. We're not a pesticide. We uh, we are not a poison. What we do is we suffocate the the microbes out and they die off. So we are we don't have to be classified under that. Which you know sometimes you're using that bioborne stuff. You have to have a special license to put that stuff in because that is a poison and it's a toxin. So K100 isn't doesn't isn't that? It's not a poison. But go ahead. And you said that about the freeze point. So mm -hmm. to mix with K100, what is the freeze point? Minus 70 at 1 to 500. And here, here's a basic thing you guys want to look at. You have to treat water on a 1 to 1 ratio. All right. So if you have a quart of water in something, then you want a quart of K100 in it and then treat the fuel so that, you know, so that you're getting rid of the moisture. I mean, you can always you can always over treat with K100, but you can't under treat. And mm -hmm. I think we did that up to Queensbury uh, it was quite a while ago, probably seven eight years ago, when they had a freeze up in their tanks, and they dumped in a, a drum of 911, and it, it got going. But it after the next day, it was frozen solid again. So. What we did was we went up and put the K100 in, and they've, they've been using it ever since, and they've had a problem. Because even, even 911, I think, 
I think, um, hold on just a minute. I don't have it with me, but I did have a bunch of um, samples made up, and with an even with a nine one that says removes water when you put it into to the water with the with the fuel, it just looks like that still. And if you read on the bottom of their directions, it says uh, open bottom of the tank until you see clear diesel fuel to get rid of moisture. So that's kind of frowned upon by the DEC when you're out on the road. So. <laughs> um yeah you know so it, and i'll take this stuff and i'll put it in a freezer and it it'll freeze overnight i mean it'll freeze solid our stars won't freeze it just it'll just stay uh solid but, can you use the same stuff for gas and diesel then it's not well, one's for gas one's for diesel yeah we have two we have two separate products here one is this is diesel in fact this diesel is going to a green label this is our gas now, you won't believe how many times a year I ask, have people call me and say, I just dumped your diesel stuff in our gas. It's not going to hurt it because it's both the same base of the product. They're both got the lubricity, they got the, you know, they get rid of the water and everything. So I got a couple schools that only buy diesel and put it in both. They put in their gas and their diesel. The only difference you're going to get is one's an octane boost and one's a cetane boost. So if you're not worried about that, then you're fine. I mean, it's it's not going to hurt at all. But, you know, we do make the two different products. They're both same price. So, so anyway. Yeah, and uh, another uh, thing that we did was that I took a bunch of samples and, and put in all the additives, every one I could find, and I put a nail in them. And I let it sit for, a, oh, probably a month. And when I, when I went back, all of the additives at the bottom had rust in it. Every one of them had rust in it. K100 is the only one that didn't have any rust in it. And I actually got a bottle from 10 years ago with a nail. It's turned it's turned uh, darker color, K100, but the nail is like new. I mean, it just you just won't get the corrosion that, that you get with all these other products. Um, anybody else got a question? Marty, you said that uh, ethanol doesn't freeze? No, no. Ethanol, when it mixes with the water, it usually won't freeze. No, gas won't freeze. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, but it, it's it's very, very, very low, like minus 45, minus 50. Mm -hmm. Usually gas won't freeze. And and, uh, and this is one thing I, I found out here in the North Country where a lot of us use Canadian fuel which Canadian fuel in the summer is minus 15 because of where they ship it all over Canada. And in the wintertime, it's minus 29. We'll go down to the, down to any of these ports or like in Albany, or you go up there in Syracuse in the pipeline and where their fuel is treated, if you're lucky to get it minus two, minus three at the most, I mean, it, it, they just don't. Canadian fuel is actually blended differently. It's blended with Carol. It's blended with a higher rate of Carol where ours isn't, it's actually a better fuel. I think it's a lot better fuel than what we have. It's a lot cleaner, but I mean, that's the difference. I mean, I have some schools that that's all they get. They'll, they'll just buy the Canadian fuel, you know, I mean, they'll treat it and that's it. They never had a problem. I mean, we've had some days up here, just like you guys have minus 25, minus 30 degrees in the wintertime, a couple of days. And that usually tells you who's got problems and who doesn't. Um, we do a lot of stuff with Bernie Buss, and that's how we first started with them was we thought out their fleet. And, but, any, Ken, you got any questions? How can we buy your product? I mean, what sizes do you, quart bottles, can we get a 55-gallon drum? You can get quarts, drums, totes, okay. tankers, whatever you need. Okay. We'll get it. A lot of my, a lot of my bigger ones will use totes because it's cheaper. It only runs them like two or three cents a gallon. Okay. But the only problem is with that is um, is that you have to put it into pails when you put it into your tanks. 
Right. If you don't either that or set up an electric pump. Some of my guys set up an electric pump and just punch in what they want into the tank when they get a load. Yeah, we usually took a fifty-five and put it in a five-gallon pail and yeah. took it out. No, yep. um, you can you can buy ours in pails too already, but I mean it's a little like you know it's a little more expensive than buying it. Right. Pail. Yeah, because I use and Deckman. We'll, I'll be talking to Pete. And okay. Set something we'll, up we can him. send you. We'll send you pails. I mean, we'll send you labeled pails. So that you don't get in trouble with anybody on it. Okay. So, you know. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. And yes, I agree with you. I use NOCO for fuel, which is Canadian mm -hmm. fuel. Yes. It's the best way to go. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they have the best fuel. I mean, Murano did does do some Canadian fuel. They used it for you, don't they, Dan? I don't know if they still do. You're still muted, Dan. Yeah, we we use we use Morabito as well. Yeah, yep, yep. I do business with Morabito. I do. I used to do a ton of business with Noco before they got rid of their lube department. Now I just do with their. Right. They don't. They don't buy it anymore. They just. They just bring me in and sell them people direct. Because we do almost all their customers in Syracuse, and when they had trouble getting Canadian fuel a couple of years ago they they put our stuff in everything and nobody had a problem so no nope. never had a problem with their fuel yeah yeah no they have good fuel yeah jimmy lee was a good friend of mine that was one of their sales guys okay they used to bring it around but yeah um but yeah no i mean anything you guys need if i mean even if you want some samples you want gas samples you want anything i'll send them down to you just tell me what you want. You want a case to take home and try and use it in your stuff, your lawnmowers, snowblowers, anything. I'll give it to you. You know, I mean, that's that's not a problem. Uh, I give it away every day. People pull up, they see my truck, they go, hey, I, I love your stuff. Can you give me, can I have some samples? So we just give it to them. So, Good. I mean, it's to me, it, 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 it's great. It's great for business. So, yeah, whatever you guys want, just you can email me or call me, whatever you want. And say, hey, I'd like to try uh, some samples. Send me down a case, and I will we'll just, I'll just give it to you. Take it and try it. Sounds good. Okay. All my mechanics are saying, make sure I got that email address so we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I it, it's if you guys want it, it's, it's mlamon at k 100com just send it to me or call me 315 again yeah i can send that out as well yeah okay we'll make yeah, sure we'll make sure, we'll make sure it goes to everybody yeah, yeah. i will and, and i'm down there once a month and and if you say hey when you're down in a couple of weeks can you stop in i will i'll stop in and see and i'll drop you off whatever you need yeah no i mean i'm glad to get, give you guys all the samples you want to try um Anything I can help you with. If you have some fuel you even want to get looked at or something, you know, let me know. I'll, I'll tell you the easiest thing I do with a lot of my customers. And it, it started up in Maine when they were having problems with fuel. I said, you know what? Every time you get a load, just put a little bit in a jar or a Pepsi bottle or something. Just leave it outside. Just watch and see what happens in the cold. If it gets cloudy, then you're going to have problems. You know, if it stays clear, then you're fine. So. Yeah, I used to take a lot of samples out of my fuel and stick it in the freezer just to see yeah. what would happen and what would go on. Yeah, I do it periodically still just to check the fuel yeah. and see how it is. Right, right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the underground tanks are great. I mean, I, I love the underground tanks because it fuels always at least 40. Even when it's cold out, it's, it's you know, it's just that when it pumps out of there into the buses, then that's where the problems begin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no. Anything I can do for you guys, just let me know. I didn't take up my whole hour, Dan, but. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah, but it, it was, uh, it's definitely informative. Let's see if we got anything else. So the Canadian fuel is blended with kerosene, and you say that that's, that's a better fuel. Yes. Pete, you say that you're running that fuel currently yes i try to get noco every time they're on the contract however i can get it that's mm -hmm. my number one choice mm -hmm. because yeah it's far superior in the winter mm -hmm. yeah yeah well i can tell you that we use at shenan hole we use the k100 religiously and everything and we don't really have any issues so we 
we definitely use it. You guys used to have more K100 than fuel in your tanks. Before yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so long as we don't, yeah. so long as we don't have any freeze ups, we're yeah. good. Yeah, that's so, what he said. He goes, "Hey, I don't have any problems." I go, "Yeah, you shouldn't. You got like thirty gallons of it in there every time." <laughs> they were buying like twenty five drums a year. I'm like, "Wow, that's that's more than some of our bigger transportation guys use." But but anyway, yep. I mean, you, you can't hurt anything by over treatment. But you certainly can under treatment. Correct. All right. Well, does any does anybody else have any questions for Marty? No. Everybody's good. Okay. And and again, this meeting will be posted to our YouTube channel, so we can watch it later. You can go back and and review it. I will make sure that everybody gets the uh, Marty's email address. If you didn't write it down, yeah, please. I'll I'll email everybody. Um, well, I would like to thank Marty for his presentation. I think it, it was very informative. I think we all at least gained a little bit of knowledge today from your product. Mm -hmm. I'm still in the process of setting up our ASE account. I don't know why it's taking so long, but I was on the phone with them the other day, and they assured me that it's we filled out our paperwork. It's all in the process, and as soon as we do, we will start um, we will start the process for getting two people each year their ASE Master's School Bus Certification. Um, I'll continue to follow up and then we'll, we'll go through with our nominations. Our next meeting will be held on November 17th. This will also be a virtual meeting. It will be uh, Cody Shamrock with Leonard Buss will be presenting on the operation and maintenance of disc brakes and how they could benefit our fleet. Um, currently, we don't have any disc brakes except on the little buses. We use all drum brakes as of right now, but I know a lot of you do use the disc brakes and um, I know a lot of the tour buses, it's a, it's a good product. Um, the summer seminar, I know a couple of us who were discussing this before the meeting, is still scheduled for July 21st, 2022. It's going to be at the On Center in Syracuse, just like it has been in the past. With that being said, does anybody have anything else to add to today's meeting? Okay, then at this point, I'm going to close today's meeting. We are 41 minutes in, and at one point we had 10 cameras on it, so I know we've got a camera out in the shop with five people looking at it. So I think it's a, so it's definitely a good cause. Our last meeting had, forget what I had on that. We had 15 cameras on that one. So that one is also posted to our YouTube channel. And then, like I said, this one will be also. So that being said, I'm going to close today's meeting and we will wait till the, the uh, next month's meeting with the disc breaks. All right, guys. Thank you Thank again. You. All right. Sounds All right. Good. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Very good. All right. Thank you. Take care, Pete. You too. We'll talk soon. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys later.